Early in 2006, Fowler 7F number 53809 returned to the West Country in a sensational appearance at Bath Green Park, followed by a great performance on the West Somerset Railway. This special Alan Ward painting advertised its real homecoming, actually arriving half a day early in true railway weather. Offloading took place on Wednesday the 17th. Okay. And there it was. One important and perhaps surprising question was clearances. After all, the loco used to run here. They don't even, when they do track maintenance now, they don't put a measuring cone through after they've done it to make sure the currencies are still safe. But they just let the train run immediately after. Yeah. That's absolutely no difference. And you're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> you're going to be a darn oh, sight more careful. While steam was being raised, the couple of inches or so clearance under the Dram Bridge at Oldland Common was remeasured, just to be on the safe side. The locomotive would now be taken very carefully around the system in steam.
coming down isn't it? So yes, track changes since closure have not caused any problem here and 53809 can go off south now. Everything seems to have been okay too down at Avon Riverside. Up there on the right is John Moore House of the Owners Group. First up is a Saturday driver training course. The lucky ones go off for a briefing with Ken Goodway. Tuition will include not only driving, but also operational matters.
there's a chance as the train pauses to chat with Doug Banks. We'll hear from Doug later about the push to Bath. Oh, it's actually it's warm up here as well. We've got a little fire going in there. That's very good. Excellent. You've got a close-up view at the moment. That looks like Ken Chadwick of the owners group. Apart from the single track, this is not totally unlike what you might have seen half a century ago. <laughs> An enthralled family yeah, watched the first Sunday passenger working arrive north. Next up, the junior cleaning gang get up close and pretty personal, with a bit of help. And then sign at the end. Just, just put your name again. Make it look good. You don't have to read it, so it's alright. Break. Yes. Combination. I'll break. get it right in the end. 
vacuum up there, I noticed. Crash there. Um, That's the thing to your left, then, John. That one? Yeah. Drain something? No, that reverser. That's your reverser? Reverser. Um, okay, so you got two Right, that's for some of the drain cops. Okay. Uh, your top one is, if you look at the pipe, it's probably your blower. I haven't done the course yet. No steam handles. What's that one, Jamie? Well done. The whistle. The railway's first-class dining cars were brought out for several evening dining trains. There was an opportunity to meet interesting people. Here, artist Alan Ward chats to John Boerhouse. The railway runs its own dining trains with its own staff and very cheerful volunteers. The pie and a pint train was supported by and a long queue for for the goodies. Now sadly deceased as of December 2020. Railway Authority Roger Newman here enjoys his pint of the special brew for the occasion. And the Halloween murder mystery dining train looked pretty spooky. From late night fun to early morning graft though. Join us shortly after 6am to see Ken Hill, Dave Skelly and Brian Smith preparing and driving 53809 on a weekday passenger working. Um, what was I going to say? I better check smoke box as well, aren't I? It's a 5-8 wet for that. It's only about half inch. All it takes is a single match, and there's the match. What I tend to do is get a few small lumps and sprinkle on.
Ken was priming the cylinder there. This is what the apprentices have to do. Oh, I'm an apprentice. <laughs> This is the job in the morning. Cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> And now for a real breakfast treat. Very well. It was a uh, lovely engine to be on. Lovely and smooth. Fantastic. The day of the end of season gala dawned wet and windy, but attendance was good. Five three eight oh nine performed on freight.
Not to be outdone, the Robert Stevenson Hawthorne Workhorse 7151 and Polish Carrel double-headed what you might call a proper freight, banked by Hudswell Clark, number 70. How's this for a freight working though? Five three eight oh nine took charge of a number of passenger trains, of course. There was also a double-headed passenger train. The star of the show was a well-loaded Pines Express in both directions at appropriate times.
the change that day to GMT meant that some night working was also demonstrated. And so, 53809 departed almost as it had come. The tender in daylight going under the bridge and the locomotive in darkness via the roundabout, the M5 and an overnight stop at Strunsham Services, leaving a desire to do it all again before long and maybe on longer track. One day, 53809 will steam into Bath again. As this iconic locomotive is winched up inch by inch, a sense of pride there perhaps that all had gone well, and a determination reinforced to press on and make Avon Valley Railway intercity before very long. We are going to go to Bath, it's an inevitability, how long it takes, mm, might be five years, I don't know, ten years, but we will be going to Bath, definitely, <laughs> because uh, we'll make sure it gets there, <laughs> with everybody's help of course, and a bit of money, and, uh, a bit of planning, so uh, we'll get there. Putting the clock back, the Somerset and Dorset Railway Trust possesses an S&D tablet exchange apparatus, complete with signed drawings by Alfred Whitaker. In the spring of 2006, sister locomotive 53808, or 88, demonstrated tablet pickup at Washford. Tablet exchange at speed made a big difference to timings.
Returning to Bitten, 53809 attracted huge interest and opportunities for photographers to experiment. In this timeless telephoto sequence, autumn leaves are blowing across the path of a locomotive which is considerably older than most of us. It's a fair bet that it's older than a lot of the trees too. The background noises are from a nearby sports field on a Saturday afternoon. Then we get staff exchange the traditional way. Note the shaking of the ground. One has to admire how bridges and viaducts stand up to this stress. You don't need telephoto for great shots, of course. Wide angle is often your best friend. <laughs> 